That track's called Asteroid. It's from the new album by Killing Joke, which is just called Killing Joke. And for the first time, because uh, last time Killing Joke was around, I wasn't even doing XFM rock shows or rock shows at all, for that matter. Uh, Chaz Coleman from Killing Joke is here. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Give us a quick update then. Nine years. Is it nine years since the Democracy album? Oh, I can't. I'm can them all. But I mean, lots happened since then. You know, I mean. It takes me nine years to get over Killing Joke, and in between that time, what have I done? I've um, I've done uh, my first opera for Royal Opera House in Covent Garden, which is about the marriage of Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene. I've changed the national anthem in New Zealand, uh, and like I got a load of chickens. <laughs> 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 and that keeps you going for yeah, nine it keeps years, me going. It? Yeah, that's Do right, the chickens yeah. take up more time than changing the national Well, they do. I've got chickens, horses, and all that sort of stuff. Like, I've got a little farm there, you know, um, like a long way, long way down and uh, and out of the way of everything. And, uh, yeah, that's my peace and quiet. Mm. Where where exactly are you based there? Because people hear about stories about from years ago when you went to Iceland, then Auckland, but you're in, on some island near... That's near right. Or I don't like there. saying the identity of it, because, like, I mean, I always, like, attract, like, complete nutcases, you know. Hello, Fatal Attraction 11, just come into my life again <laughs> right and i just don't need it you know so like um yeah i'm in the pacific absolutely right and, and you just keep yourself to yourself and keep away from everyone basically I do. around there I, I do and i do everyone a favour as well when i do it and I, the other thing is like um from next year i've got my own parish because i'm a priest <laughs> i can like marry people i can uh, baptize them and bury them Really? <laughs> <laughs> when did that come about? Oh, it came about like, the day before I actually met um, uh, met Dave Grohl. Uh -huh. Actually, and, uh, I got ordained the day before. Poor right. fools. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, this will be this will be the next thing after Killing Joke. Then you'll be doing the full priest. Have you got the, the gear to wear? I've got, I've got the old dog got... collar. Yeah. Hey, I don't wear skirts and all that because I, I mean, it's just you know, and I don't like all that sort of thing. It's yeah. a symbol of uh, mucking around with people's kids and that sort of thing. You know? Right. <laughs> 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 so you've got lots going on with that and your chickens, basically. That's right, all that sort all of right. thing, yeah. let's, let's get down to talking a bit about the uh, the music. Uh, it occurred to me, when you go away from Killing Joke and the mm. members of Killing Joke for, yeah. for such a long period of time, and you all individually kind of explore different musical directions, yeah. is there ever a worry when you get back together in the same room that the same chemistry won't be there because you've been apart and you've done so many different things? Not really. I mean, you've got to remember, like, over the last seven years, I've probably seen everybody once a month anyway, so it's like, you know, we do see quite right. a lot of each other, you know, and have a bit of an argue and that sort of thing so um it's got it's quite a st sort of strong so um social circle around killing joke you know and like um you can't really compare so many other bands probably in that way mm. that we actually do hang out together yeah because you always get the impression with bands that get together every so often they're just together while they're in right. the studio or on the road and then once they're not then they're in they're we've been playing lives. together in the last like five six years but it, it, i mean it takes so long to put anything together for killing joke anyway i mean you've got to uh, take a deep breath in for at least three years before you even start it you know yeah. and then once the, the beast is going um, you know, it's not like the old days where you, you put an album out, you know, once every 14 months, as it were. Um, now you put an album out once every four years or five years, and you have to tour it for another four years. So it's yeah. like a very different process now. But the making the album as well, that from from the stuff that I've read that you've said so far, mm. was was the you think this is the best Killing Joke album, and certainly was the easiest to make this time yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I guess when you're in, into your 25th year, you know, uh, like writing the music, I look at Julian when he's grinning his head off and looking my eye like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we know it's happening. You know, it's um, uh, it's a self-explanatory thing. It's great fun, mate. It's easy now with everybody, you know. Mm. Uh, and, and we play better, of course, right, you know. Mm. But we still bicker the same. Yeah. What's the, what's the what's the process then? You get together. Who phones who and says it's about time we need to do a new Killing Joke oh, it's album? Just, it's a collective thing. Joy's always saying to me, you know, stop doing that orchestral stuff and all that. When are we going to go and do Killing Joke? I'm always waiting around for you. He's always moaning about it like like that. And like, um... Uh, youth's always up for making music any time and like and Raven because we've got two bass players in Killing Joke you know yeah. so both have done sort of five and a half albums each you could say um, so it's quite good when you fall out of one you go with the other you, <laughs> and you fall back with the other one you know and Raven's a great character you know like um, like uh, when I go through LA from uh, from New Zealand um, he's always there he lives in the dodgiest part of L uh, Los Angeles and um, surrounded by loads of Mexicans and you know what he does he, he breeds pit bulls right Right. and he, he does cop fighting yeah, it's literally cop fight, and, and like he took me to one once, and, I, and after this, he, he, the last time I saw him, he goes, um, "I've got a great little fighter here for you." And, and like, he had this box, and he's always scratching him out. It was a little chicken in it. He got <laughs> me for a cop fight. <laughs> right. so, so they're interesting people, really. <laughs> My God! <laughs> and I love the way that that's the halfway stop off as well. You've got the rest of the band waiting in that's England, right. but you leave Auckland, then you stop off for this kind go of like Raven. This funny existence in LA, <laughs> and then it's like, okay, here we go, halfway to the Killing Joke <laughs> regroup. Him. That's right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how it genius. Is. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about the, the the Dave Grohl situation then, because from what I understand.
understand, someone uh, somehow put you two in touch and you met him in a bar, in a hotel bar in Auckland, and that was how it was arranged? Very, very, very funny, actually, yeah. Because, like, th like, the day before I got all dangerous, he said, like, when I met Dave, I had my dog's collar and everything, like, and we were in the celebratory mode, because, you know, after you get all day, after you get your masters and all that sort of thing, it's um, quite a big deal. So we got shit-faced, you know? Like, yeah. like, we must have woofed about two bottles of vodka. <laughs> and, um, uh, and, uh, so I said to him, Dave, have you got anything to conf confess? And he said, I'm sorry, Jazz, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> like, you know, there's been a bit of tension between the two Yeah, because of the know, 80s yeah. and the coming yeah, it's, it's, right. it's a fine thing that all, all the boys in Killing Joe, we're not such materialists anyway. But kind of like the slate's clean, if you know what I mean. Mm. Was he nervous? <laughs> was he nervous like, when you uh, when you well, turned well, up in the in the hotel bar? <laughs> I think I would be. If I if I'd never met you before and I've heard all the stories and then you turn up dressed like that and oh, I've no. ripped off one of your songs I and know, had a massive hit with it. Well, <laughs> well, that's about the size of it, isn't okay. it? Yeah? And like we won't even think about how much money that could have been, eh? Oh, no. Right. <laughs> 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 hey, my life's too short for that. For that yeah, so, yeah, I've got my dog's collar and I've also got my calculator, Dave. Are you ready? Let's do some yeah. arithmetic. Yeah, it's very funny. He's a real sweetheart. I mean, he's really like family stuff and I think it's very brave of him actually to do it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but we hit it off straight away and we had such such a laugh. We ended up falling all the way down a hill in <laughs> Auckland. Like, we got so blind drunk. We went the, it's all on film actually. And, um, what a charming guy. Yeah. You know, like, you can't uh, help but be impressed by the man's sincerity, you know? And I'm impressed by the fact that, like, he knows more about Killing Joke than I do. I mean, he, he listens to Killing Joke certainly more than I do. Yeah. Except for the new album. Right. Because yeah. I do listen to that three times a day. It's like a sort of cappuccino fix. No, no, <laughs> espresso fix, I should say. And, um, like, I can start the album anywhere, uh, on any track, and I love it. And I've never had that before with Killing Joke, you know? Like, I've always, like, five tracks or six tracks on an album, or even seven sometimes, uh, but never every track and I do I, I genuinely love every track on this album an unprecedented situation mm. and then in terms of his, his drumming I mean how did that come about did, did you know when you met him that you were looking for someone to drum on the album or was it we'd all sort of um, had John from uh, what's the system of a dad he, he played with us and like, we were thinking about Danny from Till because he's a mate of ours as well but then Groly he, he heard like five tracks and he said, it's mine. Mm. Uh, and like, uh, then he heard the other five and he just blew his head off, you know. And really, it's a very strange situation because, you know, most bands um, reach their definitive moments in the first two albums or so. And this is our 11th. Yeah. And it's like, um, uh, uh, it's like a definitive album. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a masterpiece. Damn it, it's a masterpiece. Yeah. <laughs> and you've never, you've never felt so excited about a Killing Joke album You can before, feel it for me, can't you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, I can, can tell that from being a Killing Joke. down your neck, it's like the heaviest band in the world, and we all know it. I now, know don't it we, is eh? really heavy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a very accomplished piece of work. Do you think, though, uh, that um, if you bear in mind all of these bands that are massive that have been around now yeah. that look up to Killing Joke so, mm -hmm. so much, uh, you they know, have to you, all come for confession, you know? Well, yeah. uh, well, this is what I, you know, this, is, this, is, this is what I'm thinking. I mean, do you think that the, the, the band has actually got you know the kind of level of respect that it, that it deserves? because all these people kind of come out the woodwork every now and then and and you know you obviously know they're around and they look up to you but uh i yeah. don't really think about it to be honest like my life's so different outside of killing joke it's as far away from killing joke as you can imagine i mean i conduct orchestras mm. and compose for a living and um when i'm not doing that uh, like i like being in complete and that's isolation mm. uh so like i don't i don't get music papers i don't keep up with anything and i don't really buy cds if i'm honest right and all i want to hear is killing joke anyway right right so it never crosses your mind then about you know who's paying their dues and stuff like that no i found like like the last uh decade is really boring musically to be honest i, I mean you know first it's all the sampled sounds of like um um i know groups like the orb yeah. funny enough uh, alex from the orb actually he's he was our old drum roadie and and we've we've kept his job for him you know he can still put up the drum kit because he hasn't got a job now you know mm. that <laughs> 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 and um, uh, and uh, then, then of course the Britpop thing came, uh, and uh, I thought that was and very, went thankfully very very depressing <laughs> state of affairs. You know, you know we, we sort of all the Lennon McCartney kind of influences, which I mean I hated the Beatles. Sorry, Paul, but I hated the <laughs> Beatles. You know, didn't like him at all. So I'm glad that's over with. And, and like I mean, look at these headlines today that exposed Blair, Iraq, and the Great Deception. I mean, I mean that was the atmosphere rounds to making of this album the fact that um, everybody in the United Kingdom woke up to the fact they've been cheated yeah. cheated by really corrupt men that should go to court yeah. Mr Blair I'd like to see you in the International Criminal Court along with Bush but of course Mr Bush won't make it because the Americans haven't signed up to the International Criminal Court they're very happy sending people there but they don't want to go there themselves of course his dad would be in Nick with him as well and uh, along with Kissinger <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna talk, I want to talk a little bit more about that in just a second but let's take another track from the album this is called Seeing Red
Seeing Red from the new Killing Joke album, which is just called Killing Joke. Jazz Coleman for the very first time, and hopefully not the last. Is no, he on the great. XFM Did you enjoy show that? that? Seeing Red's great. Oh, isn't they, it? Seeing Red is actually my favourite track from the album. It's seeing the last Red one is... we recorded, actually, and um, it's funny because um, when I when I when I sung that track, you know, like um, like when I finished. It, I just broke down. I must have cried embarrassingly enough for about half an hour and then left the studio. So it really sort of affected me because I didn't really think about all these things that you're talking about, like the influences of mm. um, the bands that we've affected and all that sort of thing. I didn't really sort of, it all weighed on me then. And like that that track seemed really like very emotional. I mean, it means a lot to me. Uh, what's it go? They're dropping bombs again and they're doing it in your name. All the rational commentaries in the papers that I read marmalade and buttered toast and the smell of Sunday roast. Kiss the ass of Uncle Sam, oh, to be an Englishman. <laughs> no, it's great. I have to say, actually, the first time I got uh, a copy of the album, I actually went back and played that track again after I finished it. That is really uh, my favourite. It's an emotional track for me, yeah. But the, I, I, I think um, you said, you know, this was the right time to do another Killing Joke album. Obviously, right. apart from your desire to go back and, and be the front man with, with, with the rock and roll band, I get the impression you are fuelled by the headlines in, in the papers. In, in I, terms I, of look, the, I mean, you got to admit, it, it must take a lot to sort of prise me away from the kind of lifestyle I live, which is pretty blunt bloody nice, you know? Yeah. Um, but I feel like uh, I need Killing Joke in my life, and I think the world needs Killing Joke. I mean, I mean, I mean we need some, like, uh, absolutely honest music, you know? As honest as, like, the Pistols when they said, like, God Save the Queen. Um, I, I need, we need this energy level of music, and uh, it's, it's just horrible. All, this, all those, like, girl and boy groups and, like, this kind of trend that started, it's a disgusting period of musical history, you know? And um, I think people, are, like, are sick of that, like, they're sick of, like, these corrupt governments that we get landed with and um it, it, killing joker well it, 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 we get the big votes i mean i've never before had the response on any album i've ever done in my life like mm. we're getting on this and it's not even released it's, it's like the atmosphere is electric everywhere we're going yeah yeah so people are more into it than ever before i think they're angry yeah i think people are angry i think people know really we don't do killing joke for the money <laughs> 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 do, you, yeah. do you also think, though, like, because of the world's current climate, and everyone's obviously very aware of that at the moment, like like you said before, that people are going, and then they look at what you've got to say, and it all kind of goes hand in hand. For the, I think it has locked time. in. It's locked in in a massive way, this album. I mean, it's explosive. And, uh, you know, we, we've reached this unprecedented time in history. I, I never would have thought before that, like, literally, revolution in a Western country was possible, but actually, it, I can see that it's possible. People are so angry, they feel utterly cheated mm. you know cheated and like um we, we don't have sovereignty in the united kingdom yeah it's, we've lost it it's embarrassing i it, it, it's shameful to be a british passport holder and uh, we've got to change that it's out of order yeah yeah how long has it been since you've lived in this country full time oh um probably about 82 yeah you know a lovely time away i haven't missed it at all. Mm. You, mm. you specifically dislike London as well, don't you? I, I don't like that. Well, no, I, I like some parts of London. You know my favourite place in England? Go on. Heathrow. Right. Uh, in the first class lounge on the way out, right? <laughs> 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 but I have, re I have read before that, you know, there are suits London, even even though more so than, than the UK in general, London is one specific uh, place like you I don't said like you before, being. it's grey, expensive, uh, depressing. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I, I don't like it. I mean, you need, you need 70, 80 quid in your pocket just to go out. And what is it? Like, it's barely a taxi and a sandwich, isn't it, these yeah. days? I don't know how people manage it myself. I think it's like, um, we're all living in a state of economic slavery, frankly. I'm not happy with things at all. Yeah. Uh, well, just just uh, from personal interest, how do you see London in terms of, say, um, pitching it up against somewhere like Los Angeles? I mean, you travel through Los Angeles when you're going through Auckland I and like stuff them like both that. the same. Yeah? Not at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate it, really. Okay. No, no. So what's the good things about New Zealand, though, and Auckland, and what goes on there that's, that's different? Well, not a lot, really, either. I mean, the fact is you've got a bit more room. I mean, you can drive for two hours without seeing a car and that sort of thing, you know? Yeah. And, like, um, there's a lot more room. What can I say? It's um, beautiful. It's not messed up. Um, uh, and, I, and I kind of feel that um, sustainable resources and this... I, I, I'm very much into permaculture. I mean, at the heart... I say, I say this to everybody. At the heart, a killing joke is a farm. Mm. Huh? And at the end of the day, um, that's, that's what I believe in. I believe in, like... Clean water. I mean, there's enough water in the world for one third of the world's population. We're in a very scary situation. And, like, um, someone's going to suffer. You know, uh, I really do not trust the state of uh, affairs. I think um, when you have an American Secretary of State, Under Secretary of State, that says Armageddon is inevitable, I mean, that's a scary 
situation to be in. When you have like people like Bush who who uh, have uh, have prayer meetings before they start the bombing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, leave it to you. I mean, do you trust this this guy? I mean, most people in England don't. They mm. think this guy's evil, and like uh, I think he is evil. I think that that great evil is coming from United States of America. Mm. And um, what, what I really find scary, even more than this, is um, the fact that people are too scared to speak out. You know, you got all these actors and um, um, people in the United States of America that um, that spoke out against this war, and now like the phones aren't ringing, they're being punished for it. So much for our democracy. Look at New Zealand, uh, uh, like they're trying to punish us with with trade now because we didn't go along with it. Notice how I say we because like I'm a bit, uh, I'm a New Zealand passport holder, right, right, and um, and thank God because like um, this country does not represent my beliefs uh, at all. I mean, fancy sending people, uh, young. British kids into a war where they're going to get killed. Mr. Blair, you've got some deaths to answer. You know, like, um, I, I really think you're a criminal and I really think you should be in prison. Mm -hmm. When you when, when you go out on the road, how do you uh, adapt from, from this, this idealistic existence that you've got in, in, in your place where you, you go away and you write your orchestral music and mm. stuff like that? It must be a bit of a culture shock when you haven't been out on the road when you're travelling around being the front man with, with a rock band again. Yeah, and it's the kind of the intensity level of Killing Joke. It's, uh, it, it, it's pretty hard on the body, mm. you know, and, uh, but, you know, the thing is about Killing Joke, it's not like any other band. I've got all my friends around me. Yeah. I've been with these guys since I was 17, yeah? you know, um, and um, I enjoy their company, if I'm honest. You know, yeah. they're, they're an outrageous bunch of people. I mean, I mean, really, in Killing Joke, you've got like an architect, a qualified architect, um, two composers. I mean, Geordie scores a full orchestra as well as me. Not that he can be bothered to do that these days. <laughs> he can't stand orchestras. <laughs> and uh, you know, you've got youth like doing this Paul McCartney stuff and the Verve and all this sort of thing, you know. So they're, they're an interesting bunch of people and Raven with his cockfight, of course, right? <laughs> um, you know, like, um, I really enjoy their, their, their company. And of course, when we get together, we don't really talk about music much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good fun being on the road and you're surrounded by, like, there's there's, very, there's, there's various sort of stratas of Killing Joke in the society around Killing Joke. And then there's all the people um, that sort of guard us when we get together and, uh, you know, and all the sort of, Gangsters and like all our friends, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 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 it's good fun. fun. How, it's long, how long do you think that this particular chapter of Killing Joke is going to last before you go off and do something else again? Because you're, you're intending oh, yeah, to do I, quite a bit of touring off the back of this. Oh, album, yeah, well, we've got 150 gigs ahead of us, actually. Um, and that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, that's a lot. Can, yeah. you, can you imagine what it's like when you get to like gig number 24 and you actually make, make, make the mistake of looking at the calendar? You go out of your mind. <laughs> you go out of your mind. Eh? <laughs> yeah. like, all you got to do is just like, deal with every day, and then one day the tour manager says, Oh, you're going home tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're really, really in the trouble because, like, <laughs> your body's tuned to two hours of this, like, intense energy every night. And, like, then you go home and you're pacing the kitchen, like, you pick a fight with the missus, and, <laughs> and, and, and there you go, and you get another divorce and do it all again. <laughs> uh, the candidate says you have to go on the road again. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long do you reckon this time for, for touring this album that you're so happy with them? Oh, well, I mean, uh, the, a, a, a year's worth of concerts are already booked up. Yeah. You know? So, I can't really see beyond that because I never look. At life more than one year you can't take life for granted i mean i've got so many friends who are dead now and stuff you know and it's funny seeing the passing of time um so like as far as i know we're going to make it to the first part of the tour and if we survive we'll make it to the end okay <laughs> <laughs> well that sounds like a good plan to me uh we're going to play one more track from the new album which is dark forces it's been a pleasure having you here thank you jazz it's been a laugh mate see you at the concert sir cool. <laughs>